Geoguive August Falter Quick the Cycling Show. We're here at Dublin City University getting ready to send the riders on their way at this year's great Dublin bike ride. We'll chat to some of the riders later on. As well as that, we've got some exciting news as the cyclocross season gets underway. We've also been to the National Track Championships in Sun Drive Road and we find out about the wonderful world of vintage bike riding. We've also been to Carrick and Shure in County Tipperary to meet up with Ireland's top road racing star Sam Bennett. We've been to Kilkenny for the latest edition of Ross Naman and we find out about the exciting new development of mountain bike trails across the country. But first, cyclocross leagues are starting up all over the country this month. And nowhere is there a greater appetite for cycling's fastest growing discipline than in Falergan County Loud, where Brian McChrystal and his team are creating a mini cycling revolution. We were at McChrystal's cycling, uh, cycling track in Jenkinstown. It used to be just fields, grass, and now it's ropes and posts and fencing, and people come here and enjoy themselves in the craze that is cyclocross. It's very family uh, orientated, uh, people enjoy it, to have fun. It's something that is taking hold of the cycling community. Guys that have been riding on the road now are kind of coming across the cyclocross and we're starting to get the venues. I have done this idea, I, I know there's one uh, down in Cork, there's one in, in Northern Ireland, in Porter Down. It's an obstacle course on grass um, and every course is unique and you work with uh, the terrain and, and and the fields that you have to bring the course to life. Um, we we put in different obstacles over the years. We've steps, you know, we've steep ramps, you know, we've jumps, we've hard, hard paths. So you're always evolving the course and building on it. And it, it is time and effort and passion. And if people are willing to come, I'm willing to keep putting the effort into it. I always trained here running as a child. Um, I didn't actually race cyclocross myself, but my kids did. So they were my inspiration to kind of bring this to life. They all row in, my sister uh, Eve's involved, and uh, my wife, my kids, my mum. So lots of people, extended cycling community. We couldn't, I couldn't have got to where I am without any help and a bit of hard work. And here we are now. And that hard work has earned McChrystal and Belurgan CC the honour of hosting the 2023 National Cyclocross Championships in January. It means an awful lot uh, to host the National Championships, a prestigious event. Um, we did an awful lot of work this summer with, with that uh, anticipation of the National Championship. We are looking to bring uh, one of the best cyclocross National Championships there has been in the country. So, um, And we're well on the way. There's a couple of things we need to do to the track, but yeah, we're delighted and proud to be able to host it. From Belurgan to the National Sports Campus in Abbottstown, County Dublin, where the superstars of World Cyclocross will assemble for Ireland's first ever round of the Cyclocross World Cup on December 11th. It's a considerable coup for Sport Ireland and Cycling Ireland, as we've been finding out. We were in discussions with the UCI and Flanders Classics about bringing the event here pre-pandemic, and uh, unfortunately it didn't, didn't come to fruition before the pandemic came along. But however, in, in line with the UCI wanting to spread this series right around the world, um, they were searching for, for venues and potential hosts outside of typical Belgium and, and Holland region. With the help of Sport Island, we've been able to accommodate them and uh, fit into the series and we're delighted that uh, the, the event will be here on campus. From Sport Ireland's point of view, it's, it's a really important ambition for us that we will host major uh, international events on our campus. It's, it's a world-class training facility, so we're, we're, we're taking this opportunity to showcase what we have on offer. It, it's exciting for us, but it's also very exciting for us to work with cycling. Cyclocross is a really important growing discipline in the sport of cycling. We, we want to make sure that people see that there are opportunities to cycle and to enjoy cycling off the road as well as on the road, and, and cyclocross is a very exciting but also very very you know, accessible discipline in the sport. So there will be a, a really big atmosphere uh, uh, and excitement on the campus. We're hoping that, that because this cyclocross discipline, it, this, it's fun to watch. There are obstacles, there are things that make it quite unique to watch. So it is very spectator friendly and we, create, we hope to create a really good atmosphere. We, we'll definitely be looking forward to have a great fan experience on, on the day. Anyone who's been to a cyclocross event in, in Belgium or Holland will know that there's a real party atmosphere with it. There's um, lots of food and drink, lots of excitement, um, people with banners and cheering, and um, yeah, we look forward to seeing that happen here on the Sport Island campus. From 25 PSI knobbly tyres to smooth slicks at over 150 PSI, the National Track Championships took place at Sundrive Road last month, and we went along to see the endurance and sprint stars of the velodrome in action. 
Sprint and Endurance Stars assemble in Crumlin, Dublin for the final events in the Irish National Track Championships, which were combined with the Dublin Track International UCI event. A total of eight gold medals in national championship races were fought over in glorious conditions, with visiting riders from overseas joining the Irish in the battle for honours in the other eight races, which comprise the Dublin Track International. Paula Walsh scooped both sprint gold medals on offer and added a new national record in the 500 metres time trial for good measure. Dervla Ivory took two silvers with Orla Mary Harrison bronze in the 500 metres time trial and Emily Kay won bronze in a rare outing in the sprint. Kay was on more familiar territory in the International Omnium where she took the victory from Lara Gillespie and South African Kerry Yonker. The Tokyo Olympian then teamed up with Gillespie to take a dominant win in the Madison, the pair's race making a popular appearance at the event. Gillespie had earlier announced her return to the local track scene with a national title in the scratch race from her Ireland teammate Kay with Gabby Homer third. Homer too could celebrate after taking gold in the individual pursuit from Keila McHale with Jenny Neenan taking bronze. Aaron Wade was another to secure multiple victories, taking an emphatic win in the men's individual pursuit national championships ahead of Sean Lennon, with Sean Landers getting the better of Michael Phelan for bronze. Wade was also on the mark in the international omnium and finished second to British rider Matthew Dobbins in the international elimination. Dobbins was also on target in the international scratch race, beating Andre Grinnell to the win after Grinnell had taken gold in the national championship scratch race the day before. In the sprint events, Harvey Barnes took victory in the kilometre time trial from Owen Mullen by just 0.039 seconds with Aaron Wade third. In the sprint, Conor Rowley qualified third but had the endurance to outlast fastest qualifier Mullen 2-1 in the final with Harvey Barnes third. Another great weekend of track racing in Sundrive Road. Now here's cycling at a different speed. The Old Velos Festival celebrates the bike from the glorious days of yore when steel was real and what few gears you had were shifted from the down tube. We met up with the people embracing the heritage of the sport in the sumptuous surroundings of Curramore House in County Waterford. This event is for people who have an interest in vintage racing racing bikes. We started a number of years ago by, we went to an event called the uh, Leroyke in Italy and we got hooked on it there and then we decided we'd run one here ourselves and it has grown and grown and grown over the years. We, we now have about 100 riders here today. We have an incredible collection of vintage racing bikes of an incredibly high standard. There's a lot of collectors here in Ireland who are producing some absolutely beautiful bikes. We have everything from 1932 up to steel bikes in the late late 80s, early 90s. I, I love the old chrome, the detail, uh, the history on it. Uh, I have modern bikes. I'm just back from Italy doing the Stelvio on modern bikes. But uh, I just like the, the passion for the old bikes as well. Like I actually know who bought the bike that I restored. So I know that they brought it in from France in the early 60s. I, he's still alive, you know, um, and I'm sure he's going to be looking forward to hearing the story of the bike so far when I do touch base with him again. I, I like that the bikes are kind of repairable as opposed to replaceable, so, you know, you buy a bike, if you steal a frame, if something happens to the frame, you can get it repaired. Bikes keep got like these bikes, some of them be over 50 years old and they're still going. They're built to last as opposed to modern bikes, so, yeah, as, as Shame said, steel is real. So. Well, it's a celebration of bikes, riders and roads. One of the things we always say about the Old Velos is that we're celebrating the old roads of Ireland that people otherwise wouldn't get a chance to ride and possibly don't even know or don't know they can go up and down them. And they can. Bikes can do everything. And these old bikes show that that can be done years ago and they can be done now. Our, our hope is that more people will come to, to enjoy it. We are welcoming modern bikes as well. That's absolutely fine. But we hope that maybe somebody might buy a jersey from a team they remembered in the past, you know, and then they say, gosh, maybe I could get one of those old bikes. Maybe I could change gears like that guy does on the sound tube. I think there'll be more events in the future. There's certainly a lot of events in Europe that people that can attract people to. But then when you've the facilities that you have in Ireland, the growing facilities between, you know, greenways or a greater understanding of roads from drivers who really appreciate giving us the space. That's, you know, that's what makes events like this possible and people giving the people the courage to get out. And nostalgia being born. And people love nostalgia. 
Shine la hai kuda hain. In Egan Brisha, we hear from Sam Bennett. We see the international stars of road racing at Rostamon. We hit the fast developing mountain bike trails. And we're here at the great Dublin bike ride after the break. Falcha Rashikorda. It's been a roller coaster of a year for Sam Bennett. Finally back on the winner's podium at Vuelta España, only for COVID to upset his fairy tale comeback. We caught up with him on a recent trip to Carrick and Shore. Yeah, I was really happy in the, the Vuelta because, yeah, I kind of found myself again and everything was going in the right direction and I was getting stronger as the race went on. Like the Wednesday or Thursday into the first week of the Vuelta, even though I got the two wins, we had the rest day on the Monday after the, the first three stages and I was dead. Like my muscles were aching, I was like really tired and I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm gonna get through this, I'm gonna have to bluff. And uh, uh, actually by the, the Wednesday or Thursday, something clicked in the body and it was just like, it was as if it just recognized what was going on and uh, it just a switch flicked and I was climbing better. I could see the peak power coming up in the intermediates. The next day, Thursday, I was like, oh, maybe I had a good day. Maybe I'm gonna dip now. And then I was better again. And just unfortunately, I got sick. So yeah, it was that moment um, when I was pushing the body and I had to go deep and I saw it was responding well. I was like, thank God it's still in there. Like, <laughs> it's coming out now. <laughs> you know, like I, I changed teams. People thought that I wasn't gonna be the same rider. I uh, missed the Tour de France. Uh, for a second year in a row. Um, I like to forget about it, refocus on a new goal and go again. Like the week going into the tour, I, I, I took a few days off and I a load of people trying to ring for media and I just kind of hid away and then uh, played towards the Vuelta. I think it was the right thing for me to do because then otherwise I'd be overthinking it and you kind of let it get inside your head too much. So I just had to get away from it all and yeah, go again. There are different milestones that you reach to get to the point that you are today. So like one point would have been, earlier on would have been, it could be the Junior Tour of Ireland. Um, then another point would be winning a bunch of sprint in the, the Ross when there was some quite good sprinters there and you were young and or a glimpse of potential that you're going in the right direction and um, that you know you're one step closer, one step closer. I think a big one was winning in Tour of Britain where it got me the pro contract like that was a point in my career where it was if I didn't win a stage there I was going back to college and I was giving up cycling so that was a make or break week for me uh, and I won and I, um, I went on to be an okay professional bike rider. Every moment is special for different reasons. <laughs> I think you're never done learning in the sport, like, and the sport is always changing and it's getting, it, gets, it always gets, you always look back and say, oh, in my day now is harder and all that, but it's always developing in different ways and there's different styles and you always have to adapt to that. Um, so there's always something new. There's always somebody new coming through that wants to take your spot. So you always kind of have different competitors that have different characteristics on a bike. So I don't think it can get old, but like when you get successful in the sport, you kind of get greedy and you want more and more and that kind of keeps you going as well. Um, but I think a big part of it as well is that cycling is, feels like my identity. If I didn't do cycling, I don't know who I am. So, like cycling was the thing that got me out of my bedroom as a kid playing video games to getting out, to traveling the world, meeting people, giving me a sense of who I am and giving me a bit of confidence. So, and it's given me a great life and it's given me a great life for the family myself and my wife are creating. So I think I owe a lot to cycling and that keeps me going, I think. Yeah, I've trained the last, um, last week and a half, week and a bit. Um, I'm really trying to kill myself, get the form back to just do hopefully three more races. Because I felt it got, like, kind of took me nearly a year to get back to myself. 
need to finish the season on a good note <laughs> then I'll be in a happy place. <laughs> The 16th edition of Ireland's international road stage race, Ross Lamont, was another epic as the event continues to provide an important international racing outlet for local riders and also serves as an inspiration to the next generation. We've been to Kilkenny to find out what makes this five day race so special. Every year we say it's the best race yet, and this year was definitely the best. It was so tough, the weather conditions were so tough, but it was really, really great racing really enjoyable we had lots of tough decisions to make throughout the race um, but yeah I think definitely it was the best one yet. So it is a pinnacle it is something to inspire and promote I think that the, the inspiration that this kind of event brings is, is a really good boost. There are a lot of young Irish riders actually in the event and it's really inspirational and it's an opportunity for them to take part in a really big bunch race which they don't get in Ireland very often and, and so we're really thrilled to support it. I suppose I think it's very important, I think uh, most people would consider it a very important race, it's the pinnacle um, for Irish women's racing but it also serves like a, f a fairly significant role for teams in GB and also our international riders. So we're providing a race, um, I suppose maybe it's a pathway race onto World Tour, onto World Championships and that's where we see it and that's where we want to keep it for now. Yeah, I mean, this is such a big race. This has been a big goal of mine this year. We were discussing it last year that this would be one of our key events. So yeah, I mean, it couldn't have gone much better for me this week. So yeah, I'm delighted. Uh, well, like it's the biggest Irish women's race in the country like like I looked up to so many women doing it so actually getting to be here and do the race and actually be competitive in it is like a very special thing so yeah it means a lot. The, the opportunity to, to, to showcase women cycling is very important we want to encourage women to get out on their bikes we, we have seen a really good upsurge in cycling in Ireland but we want to see more women in that upsurge that's really important for us and for people to see that the excitement of what a race like this can bring is really really exciting for us. It's a fantastic event, brilliant to see such participation and such support for everything Kilkenny. Uh, we really want to grow this event over the coming years. It, it, cycling is one of the key sports, it's part of our national sports policy from those who just want to cycle on a social basis all the way up to high level, high performance sport and Rostaman is a key event now in the sporting calendar on promoting cycling. We've got a major events team that will be working on trying to grow the event. Uh, greater opportunities around participation. Spectator interest was huge here, so I think uh, there's only very positive uh, years to come for Rastamon. Mountain biking has enjoyed a post-COVID boost that shows no sign of slowing. Niall Davis of Biking.ie was telling us that there are big plans in place to develop infrastructure in Ireland's forests to cater for both the local and international demand. Mountain biking, in my opinion, as a mountain biker, has always been a developing and expanding sport. I think after the recession in 2010, 11, those kind of years, the sport really grew. And even after COVID more recently, it's completely exploded like any other cycling discipline. For me, the, the beauty of mountain biking is it's freedom. You're out on the trail, you can be on your own, you can be with a group, but it's just the thrill of going downhill or the, the thrill of heading off for an adventure. In 2012, Quilcher developed an off-road cycling strategy which was probably ahead of its time then. And what it foresaw was the expansion of these national mountain bike trail centres. So we've Balnestow here in County Wicklow, Ticknock in Dublin, the Sleeve Blooms in the Midlands, which spans Offaly and Leash. Then we have Ballyhora in County Limerick and Kulani in Sligo. So together with Falch Ireland and the Department of Rural Regeneration um, and some of the local county councils, they pulled together some funding of up to 13.9 million euros and that is to expand all the trails to build over 100 kilometres of new single track for visitors who might come from overseas to ride a mountain bike in Ireland. So it's a, it's a tourism project, but also catering for all the local bikers at each place. When you arrive to these national mountain bike centres, all the trails are waymarked, it's easy to follow, and it's graded just like skiing, where you would have a blue, red and a black trail. So it's free to the public to use, it's a great facility, well maintained, Biking.ie provides bike rental lessons and tours in Balanced and Tick Knock, but we also design out the National Mountain Bike Trails. We would come along at the start of the process and identify the best trails and the best locations for each of the sites, and we would work closely with Quilcha to project manage those and to oversee the construction. We first of all do a macro design, so we would look at the site like with a big lens, like a high level design, and we would look at the concepts for each location, so in Ballyhara, for instance, we would have had a lot of long distance 
more tame cycling routes, more traditional cross country. But what that place really needed was a density of trails close to the car park, somewhere for younger riders to challenge and push their limits a little bit more. So that involved upgrading and creating some more black grade descents within a close reach to the car park area. So it's that kind of thing that we would identify first and then after that we would work with Quilcher to develop specifications for the trails, put those out to tender and we know now based on feedback this summer even that our trails rival some of the best in the world for their flow, their characteristics, how they're built and a lot of that is down to, well actually all of that <laughs> is down to the mountain bike contractors that we have because they're, they're mountain bike riders themselves first and foremost. It's their passion that makes them go that extra mile and it's, that's the magic of it all and that's what makes it such a, a nice project to be involved in and you'd have to credit Quilcher for that because at the end of the day these are public trails free to use and to have such a world class facility around Ireland is, is amazing. Finally this month, as part of the celebrations for the European Week of Sport, the Great Dublin Bike Ride took thousands of riders up into North County, Dublin and surrounding counties with a choice of 100 or 60 kilometre routes. It's been a great day out here. Let's get a flavour of the action. It's a beautiful day, it's cool, uh, it's, it's just a perfect time of year to do it, and it's fun. You know, you get out and see a bunch of people, different bikes, you get to hang out and just relax and have a good day. Great atmosphere, looking forward to the ride and we enjoy ourselves. Uh, Great Dumb Bike Ride is a key event, it's a flagship event for European Week of Sport. So it's really about giving people an opportunity to get out there, get active, um, pre prepare for the event and then obviously um, complete the event with, with friends, family. We had a lot of corporates do it as well today so it's really a social piece and also about getting out there and getting active. It's a great day, uh, great weather, a little bit cold, I've got the hat on, but um, great to see so many people out just enjoying the bikes and the like sort of semi-closed roads nature of it. I think it just made it a brilliant day out for everyone. It was, it was a great start. Quite fresh, but uh, happily it was uh, the weather stayed dry. So I really enjoyed it. Well, obviously it's all about awareness, staying fit, just to get them on the bike uh, and getting active. And, and this is a great way. It's one of the, the key events just, just during this week. Get active and stay fit, be healthy. Uh, and cycling is one of those uh, key elements and it's just one of the easier ones to do as well. Like there was plenty of people here that wouldn't have done an event like this and they had the opportunity, well the option of doing 60k which is pretty flat or 100k which was a bit more challenging so I met a lot of people on the road today that were nervous starting but enjoyed it as the day went on. I've always said the great thing about cycling is you can do anything from it, from commuting to going out on social rides, to going out on your own to clear your head or on the opposite to get some motivation, get some ideas out of it, to race, to have sore legs, everything you can think of you can, you can get on a bike so that's why I've been always kind of trying to promote my sport because it's a kind of multitask in every single way. Well that's it for the cycling show for this month. Taylor Action and Visha Hogan, Biggie Lane. Sloan. <laughs>